Dayton, Greater Dayton RTA board meeting. We stand by doing the pledge of allegiance and do the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we have a roll call? Mrs. Harrison? Present. Mr. Williamson? Here. Mr. Corrado? Here. Mrs. Hurd? Here. Mr. Hoagie? Here. Mrs. Howard? Present. Mr. Lumpkin? Here. Mrs. Matthew Stenson? Mr. Rutherford? Here. Thank you. I think at this point I can declare a quorum. Now we'll move on to the um, next item, which is the uh, consent agenda. You received a copy of the agenda prior to the meeting. Um, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Hearing none, I'll consider them approved. The minutes of the meeting of May 7th, 2019 were presented for review to the full board prior to today's meeting. Unless there is any board member who requ requests a reading of the minutes, I will ask if there are any corrections or additions to the minutes as presented. Having heard no requests for a reading of the minutes nor any corrections or additions, the minutes stand approved as presented. We will start with committee reports, Finance Personnel Committee, Mr. Lumpkin. Lumpkin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Finance and Personnel and Planning Committees met for a jointly held meeting on May 21st, and the result of the committee is recommending 1,000 action items. <laughs> Almost, not quite. No, there's only there's seven of them. Uh, action item number two. Apollo Video Technology, Uninterruptible Power Supply. This item is for the purchase and the installation of Apollo Video Technology, Uninterruptible Power Supply, UPS, for the Greater Dayton RTA's current fleet of 263 revenue vehicles, both fixed route and paratransit. The UPS an accessory, is an accessory to the RTA's existing mobile video system purchased from Apollo Video in 2016 at a cost of $3.2 million. In the event battery power to the camera system is lost, UPS will allow cameras to run for up to 30 additional minutes. This procurement is sole, is sole source because Apollo is the original equipment manufacturer for the RTA's video system, and only installations by Apollo's approved vendors will be covered under warranty. Procurement for UPS is being brought to the board at this time because it supports RTA's core value of safety for our customers and employees. Ms. Davis presented this action at our committee meeting and the associated details are included in the uh, package today. Staff is available to answer any questions that the board may have. Hearing none based upon the recommendations of the committee, I move to award a contract to Apollo Video Technology LLC for the uninterruptible power supply for up to $215,752 plus a $10,000 contingency for unforeseen conditions for a total award amount of $225,752. Actual costs may vary based on the actual number of units purchased. This procurement will be funded with 80% federal funds. I second. It's been properly moved and second that action item number two, Apollo Video Technology Uninterruptible Power Supply be approved. Question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Abstentions? Motion carries. Action item number two is approved. Action item number three, purchase of pole cages. RTA requested bids for the purchase of pole cages for three years. This project is consistent with RTA's core values of safety, integrity, and stewardship as we demonstrate our commitment to improve the overhead trolley system infrastructure. These pole cages are being manufactured to RTA's detailed specification and are used in conjunction with the installation of steel strain trolley poles. There are five sizes of the cages in this procurement. Ms. Davis presented this action item at the committee meeting and associated details are included in today's package. If there are any questions, staff is here to answer them at this time. Hearing none based upon the recommendation, 
of the committee, I move to award a contract to Owen Supply in the amount of $99,660 for pole cages over a three-year period and to ratify the previous purchase amount of $17,388 <coughs> for a grand total award of $117,048. These cages will be purchased uh, as needed and will then be reimbursed by the FTA for 80% of the cost. I'll second. It's been properly moved and second that action item number three, purchase of pole cages, be approved. Question. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Action item number three, purchase of pole cages, is approved. Action item number four, purchase, installation, commissioning, and testing of two new in-ground hoists. The purpose of this procurement is to purchase two new in-ground hoists, including installation, commissioning, and testing. This project will include removal of the pro and proper disposal of the existing concrete where the hoist will be installed. This project is consistent with RTA's core value of safety and stewardship as we demonstrate our commitment to maintain safety in our facilities. The vendor required to provide, <coughs> is required to provide all labor, materials, and permits successfully to complete the project. The state of Ohio competitively bids many of the items with which public entities may purchase without going through additional competitive procedures. The hoist installation commissioning and testing is on the state of Ohio contract with Rotary Lift. Ms. Davis presented this action item at the committee meeting and associated details are in included in the package and staff is here to entertain any questions you may have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendations of the committee, I move to award a contract to Rotary Lift for the purchase, installation, testing, and commissioning of two in-ground hoists in the amount of $280,078 plus a 10% contingency to cover unforeseen situations for $28,008 for a grand total award of $308,086. This procurement will be funded with 80% federal grant funds. Awesome. It's been properly moved and second that action item number four, the purchase, installation, commissioning, and testing of two new in-ground hoists <coughs> be approved. Questions? <coughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Abstentions? Motion carries. Action item number four will be approved. Action item number five, revised human resources policy number six, equal employment opportunity. This policy relate, <coughs> relates RTA's commitment to all employment actions being administered without regard to race, color, religion, national <coughs> origin, sex, age, genetic information, disability, veteran status, or other protected class. This policy has been updated to reflect the Federal Transit Administration program requirements. A newly required Chief Executive Officer policy statement is also attached. At our committee meeting, we suggest that Mr. Chris Conrad of Coolidge Wall provide an opinion regarding the actual <coughs> accuracy of the revised policy. Mr. Conrad made suggestions on the policy statement, and that information has been distributed around the dais today. Ms. Stanforth presented this action item at our committee meeting. Staff is available to answer any questions that the board may have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the revised human resources policy number six, equal employment opportunity, which includes previous review by RTA's legal counsel. I'll second. It has been properly moved and second that action item number five, <clears throat> revised human resources policy number six, equal employment opportunity be approved. Question. No questions, uh, Madam President, but just one comment. And again, that is whenever there is a change in either the CEO or the EEO, that the policy statement, not the policy itself, but the policy statement needs to be amended and a new one issued in the name of whoever that happens to be. So I just wanted to, a little reminder. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Abstentions. Motion carries. Action item number five has been approved. 
Action item number six, revised human resources policy number 11, self-insured retiree survivor benefit. <clears throat> this policy provides a survivor benefit to a certain retired employees of the RTA. Benefits are paid from the employee self-insured death benefit plan, which is maintained in an irrevocable trust agreement. The policy has been updated to reflect years of service requirements as detailed in the current amalgamated transit union, <coughs> transit, yeah, transit union local number 1385 labor agreement. First four bullet points have been updated to reflect 15 years of contiguous service as opposed to the previously stated 17 years of conti continuous service. Ms. Stanforth presented this action item at our committee meeting and the associated details are included in today's board package. Staff is available to answer any questions the board may have. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move to approve updating human resources policy number 11, self-insured retiree survivor benefit. A motion's on the floor. Can I get a second? I'll second. It's been properly moved and seconded that action item number six, revised human resources policy number 11, self-insured retiree survivor benefit be approved. Question? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Abstentions, motion carries. Action item number six is approved. Action item number seven, management information systems policy number four, open data and application programming interfaces. The RTA's mission to provide great value, dependable service, and to be responsive, timely, and accountable for all that we do. RTA is committed to increasing transparency, efficiency, public engagement, and supporting technological innovation and economic growth. Open data and application programming interfaces, APIs, are important as the RTA faces a critical challenge to plan and deliver comprehensive, high-performing, multimodal mobile network and the introduction of shared mobility services and technologies. Through the thoughtful implementation of this open data and API policy, RTA can improve the, uh, <clears throat> the provisions of services, increase transparency and access to public information, and enhance coordination and efficiencies among all mobility service and technology providers, partner orga organizations, both private and public, along with citizens of this region. Mr. Harrington presented this action item at our committee meetings and the associated details are included in today's package. Staff's available to answer any questions the board may have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move to approve MIS policy number four, open data and application programming interfaces. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that action item number seven, management information systems policy number four, open data and application programming interfaces be approved. Question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Abstentions. Motion carries. Action item number seven is approved. Action item number eight, maintenance <coughs> items related to Dayton Public Schools. This action item is being brought to the Board of Trustees contingent upon the Dayton Public School, School Board, DPS, approving a contract for student bus service with the RTA. It has been estimated that this proposed service will require up to 35 additional buses. Staff has determined that the one <coughs> that the one-time cost involving multiple vendors to restore up to 35 buses to meet the potential vehicle needs for this proposed service is an estimated $800,000. Much of this estimated cost is for onboard electronic systems such as radios, CAD, AVL cameras, DVRs and modems and other equipments necessary to restore the buses back to normal operating condition. Although a contract with DPS has not yet been negotiated, the cost of the bus service will be reimbursed. Ms. Davis uh, presented this action item at our committee meeting and the associated details are included in today's board package. If staff is on, available, if anybody has any questions at this time. I do have a question. Um, I think the school board has now met and said that they want to go forward with this. They did approve it on the 28th, yes. Okay. Do we have a contract yet? We have a draft document. Any other questions on readiness? 
Hearing none, based upon the recommendations of the committee, I move to approve funding not to exceed $800,000 plus a 10% contingency or a total of $880,000 to restore up to 35 buses to normal operating condition for this proposed service. The board approval is contingent upon the RTA securing a contract with Dayton Public School Board for student bus service. Second. It's been properly moved and second that action item number eight, maintenance items related to Dayton Public Schools be approved. Question. Yes. No question, but statement. Uh, it was stated that this will not, if this does take place, it will not be routing everyone to the um, hub. The hub. Yes. So I know that that will be a concern if we start busing children again. Thanks for mentioning that. That was something that um, was mentioned at the committee meetings, that it will relieve some of the children that end up down here at the hub. Any other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Abstentions? Motion carries. Action item number eight is approved. Some additional items, the February 2019 sales tax update at the meeting, Ms. Beer reported that the 2019 sales tax receipts equal 2.9 million. Uh, the receipts exceed February 2018 by 55,000 or 1.9%. They exceed February 2019 budget by 35,000 or 1.2%. Year to date, February 2019 sales receipts are equal to 5.7 million. Um, the receipts exceed year-to-date of 2018 by $146,000 or 2.6%, and they exceed year-to-date February 2019 budget by $130,000 or 2.3%. April 2019 financial statements, Ms. Beard reported for the month of April in 2019, the net gain after local depreciation is $46,000 compared to a budgeted net loss of $176,000. Operating revenue operating revenues were 61,000 above budget <clears throat> and operating expenses excluding depreciation were 130,000 under budget. RTA local depreciation expense was 74,000 over budget while non-operating revenues were 105,000 better than budget. Year to date, April 2019 net loss after local depreciation is 726,000 compared to year to date budget net loss of 1.6 million. Operating revenues were 75,000 above budget and operating expensive ex expenses excluding depreciation were $497,000 under budget. RTA local depreciation expense was 127,000 over budget while non-operating revenues were 430,000 better than budget. The details and variances explanations associated with the financial statements are included in today's committee meeting package. And after that marathon, that will conclude my report, <laughs> Madam Chair. Thank you. We appreciate that, Mr. Lumpkin. <laughs> um, next on the agenda is the Planning Committee, Ms. Howard. The Finance, Personnel, and Planning Committees met for a jointly held meeting on May 21st, and as a result, the Planning Committee is recommending one action item for the Board's consideration. Action item number nine, Transit Mobility as a Service Pilot Program Fair Payment Solution. The purpose of this action item is to move RTA forward in blurring the lines of mobility into one seamless integrated network of services that enhances the customer experience for all. In October 2018, RTA Board Trustees approved a sole source five-year strategic partnership agreement with 9280-0366 Quebec Incorporated, also known as Transit, a multimodal trip planning app company. Since approval, RTA has been working with Transit on the planning and proposed implementation to pilot and launch a fully functional mobility as a service platform for the region. This platform will allow for the phased integration of various mobility components, such as fixed route, paratransit, on-demand, human service transportation, bike share, taxi, transit network companies, car share, scooters, and other forms of shared mobility. 
RTA estimates, estimates that in order to fully deploy the mobility as a service platform with transit, additional future investments of up to $2,900,000 may be required. The execution of these future expenditures are dependent upon Board of Trustee approval and receipt of future capital and operating funding, which will be identified and allocated with RTA's current and future budgets. Mr. Brandon Palachicchio provided a detailed presentation at our committee meeting, and the supporting information is included in today's board package. Staff is available to answer any questions you may have. Hearing none, and based upon the recommendation of the Planning Committee, I move to award 9280-0366 Quebec Incorporated, also known as Transit, a five-year estimated grand total award not to exceed $1,158,000 for the Mobility as a Service Pilot Program Fair Payment Solution. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded that action item number nine, Transit Mobility as a Service Pilot Program Fair Payment Solution, be approved. Question. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Abstentions. Motion carries. Action item number nine is approved. <coughs> Other general <coughs> updates include in addition, at the committee meeting, Mr. Brandon Palachicchio provided a summary document of recent activities in the Customer and Business Development Department. These activities included the most recent events held for the What Drives You campaign and the launch of RTA's partnership with Go Ride Health, powered by Ford. Other updates included a breakdown of ridership on the flyer, which has doubled since the launch of the service in November. In the latest report on ridership, the flyer is averaging more than 1,600 riders on weekdays and nearly 700 riders on Saturdays. To further support the flyer's service, this Friday evening from 6 to 8 p.m., RTA is hosting a flyer game night on board the flyer in conjunction with the Downtown Dayton Partnership's first Friday's event. This concludes my report, Madam President. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Howard. Any questions from anyone else? All right, the next item on the agenda is Chief Executive Officer's report. Thank you, Madam President. I do have a number of items. It's been a busy couple of weeks here at RTA, to say the least. Uh, as you know, uh, well, actually, there were months of planning and preparation for uh, I will call it the hate event. I, I, I don't want to call it a rally. Uh, but, uh, and, and I must say kudos to Chris and Roland and their team uh, and maintenance as well for the support there. We had a major move of shutting down our hub here and relocating all our services over to the library area. And, uh, and it, it went extremely well, as well as it could. So, and of course, right on the heels of that, we did have the tornado events. Uh, and I'm just going to give you a little brief update on where we're at. We did send out an informational bit the other day, or I think it was yesterday, that uh, I think is very helpful. Uh, for us, technically, we had three segments of our infrastructure uh, that had significant damage that our line crew is working on. Uh, and then the other problem with infrastructure was lots of debris, lots of tree limbs on wire uh, all over the system, uh, and uh, they've been clearing that ever since. Our Northwest Hub did have some physical damage. We had some damage to the roof area. Uh, there were some light fixtures, signage that was broken, and we actually had the front wall of the building separate on the one end, which was a bit of a challenge, but it, uh, we were able to secure it and uh, the engineers have developed a fix that will be uh, taken care of. Until last night at about 8.30 p.m., there was no power there. We had generators there, uh, and there was an attempt to steal the, the generators that were put in place, and in the process, one of our employees was assaulted by the folks involved. Uh, so, that, you know, there's been a lot to deal with, uh, but people are getting through it. Uh, 
employee-wise, we have about 15 employees that have suffered what we would consider major to catastrophic damages to their uh, personal homes, including a uh, half dozen or so that are probably total losses of their homes. Uh, but people are resilient. One, uh, one of our maintenance employees, I had seen on social media pictures of his home, and I texted him and, uh, and at the middle of the conversation, I said, well, where are you? And he, he was at work. And uh, it was kind of shocking to me. And he said, you know, I, I, I need it. I need to be at work. So in fact, I just saw him out with the line crew here a, a couple hours ago. So we're doing what we can, including, uh, you know, we're, we've been having employees bring things in for folks, but we've been trying to work one-on-one -on -one with people to see if there is something we can do for them and where we can, we will certainly do that. There will be more things coming. I mean, every day something new pops up. We had some video from the Northwest Transit Center. Originally, uh, Chris sent it to me to, uh, so we could see what 100 mile plus an hour winds look like. Uh, but then they also uncovered the acts of one of our younger bus drivers. I think he's only been here a couple years, going bus to bus, evacuating the buses you know, once he got the alert. It was uh, really impressive to see that. And I know there's gonna be more of these stories come out that, you know, what people have done. Uh, so from there, I would defer to what we sent you on the relief efforts. Uh, we're trying to collect everything that's been involved uh, for one, to see if we, we can recover some of the costs. We've provided a lot of service to move people and certainly we'll have costs related to the infrastructure. Uh, year, the last time we had a major event uh, which was Ike or Katrina where we had the windstorm. I know we were able to qualify for some FEMA funding, so we'll be looking at that. But, I, you know, I really want to throw some roses at everybody on the operations side, maintenance, transportation, and security uh, for these events that went on in the past week and a half. They, they really did yeoman's work, uh, and we got through it really well. You know, obviously there, there are always going to be challenges when that happened, little hiccups with individual customers, but we're working on on those things and ironing those out. Still having detours every day on certain routes, it seems, uh, and that's going to be a fact for a few more days, I would think. On the DPS front, just to let you know, uh, we've been preparing internally for a long time for this reality, which we thought the Dayton School Board would adopt. Uh, so I think uh, we're, we're in pretty good shape at the moment. Our biggest challenge will be we, we need some more folks uh, to operate buses primarily. Uh, so right now we're looking to hire about two dozen big bus operators and we, I think we have 12 to 15 or more connect operators we were already hiring for. Uh, so a lot of hiring going on right now. It sounds like maintenance is actually way ahead on terms of the bus preparation and this action item you did earlier will make it much easier for us to make sure we get all the buses in shape uh, for the event. Interestingly, we got a public records demand today from the Dayton Daily News about the analysis that was done to develop, uh, I guess, the price proposal. So we'll be responding to that. I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, but my sense is this goes back to the leadership at DPS wants to do everything they can do to get kids in school and improve their situation in terms of uh, the performance of the students. And uh, we've done LS before, you know, this is not as large as what we did uh, in say 2006 to 2009. We had about 40 buses uh, in daily service making this happen. These are limited stop trips that do not come through right stop. They have a totally separate route, but they are open to the public, which is required uh, by federal rules. And they will have published timetables for that reason, but they generally do a pretty good job. We actually are scheduling folks work with DPS because they have the census information to develop where we will be targeting the neighborhoods to pick up kids and deliver them to the schools that they will go to. Right now, uh, we don't have the final details, but you know we're shooting for about that, what Frank Eckler would call a 32 busser uh, is probably the terminology he would use. So that that's the way we're heading. And uh, I'm sure we'll get there. It, uh, we'll, we'll have a busy next two months getting ready for it. But uh, I know our team, especially our HR team, is on this. They're going to make this all happen. So uh, with that, you know, there have been other things going on as well. Bob Brzezinski and I have been pretty intimately involved in the new state funding, you know, that is now law. And uh, we've been both working on 
uh, advocating for how the money gets split. Um, we've had uh, some sessions with ODOT, and there will be another one coming up here soon. But so far, it looks good. The final number is 76.5 million statewide. Uh, and uh, the, the draft formulas that ODOT is using uh, would be very beneficial to us. So that's, it's, a good, it's a good thing going forward, and we'll continue to work with that as we go. So notably missing is Brandon. I think Brandon and Tim Harrington are both at the uh, City of Dayton's having a Smart City event today, uh, and they've been working on that. So I've been asked to show you this hardware. It's actually pretty nice. It's very heavy. Uh, we recently, RTA, uh, was named a three-time winner by the 2019 Hermes Creative Awards, an international awards competition that recognizes outstanding communications and design work. I see a communicator and a designer in the back of the room right now. Uh, the awards are administered and judged by the Association of Marketing and Communication Professionals. The RTA Communications team was a recipient of one platinum, one gold, and one honorable mention award for its electronic media, print media, design, and social and social media work uh, when we did the marketing launch for the flyer in 2018. The RTA received the highest honor, the platinum award, for its print media with integrated marketing and product branding of the flyer service. It is pretty damn cool, isn't it? It really is. So. More than 6,000 submissions were entered and judged for the 2019 awards, and we came home with three of those. Certainly, congratulations to Jessica and her team, and Kara is one of our designers in the back who does graphic work for us. Uh, and uh, obviously, the flyer has been kind of a, I would say, well, it's probably a grand slam on most fronts, and uh, you know, it's one of those rare combinations of perfect storm of good things. Uh, uh, and it just keeps getting better. People want more of it, so that's, that's a good, good thing. And the numbers, at some point, they'll level off, but we're really thrilled with where it is. And, uh, and I really do think, uh, you know, we, we gave direction to our folks that this had to be unique, it had to be different, had to be a powerful message, and I think they absolutely did a great job and won this award. So after it stays in my office for about five years, we might let it go, <laughs> go down to the fifth floor where they can have it there. But I wanted you to be aware. And that's all I have to report. Yeah. Job well done. Um, old business. Is there any old business that we need to cover? Any new business? Um, I do not receive any public comments. Did I get? Okay. Um, board comments. We'll start with Adrian. Well, I live in Trotwood, and I, <laughs> I told you once before how I had gotten lost on the east side of town because there was construction, and so I found a stop that said temporary RTA stop, and I knew I was saved, so I just <laughs> waited for a bus and followed it. <laughs> well, in my community in Trotwood, we live in the very back of the plat, and it was a while before we could get out because of the trees and everything that were blocking the street. When I was finally able to get out, the first thing I saw sitting on the parking lot at the church was an RTA bus, and it said, Dayton Strong, and they were allowing you to charge your um, mm -hmm. electronics and to just sit on the bus and be cool. And I'm saying, wow, there we go again. RTA is here when the community needs them. When I need you, there's a bus. I am so proud to be on the board, to be part of an organization that truly follows its mission of helping and being a good citizen in the community where it is located. So I give kudos and all of those other words that you say to all of the staff at RTA because you are making it possible for us to stand proudly, get to where we need to be, and do it in a comfortable manner. Thank you. 
Um, I'd just like to say in the wake of, uh, you know, the storm and things that have happened, um, one of the first return to normal with the bus going up and down Philadelphia actually is uh, because it was eerie when there was no power and lights out and nothing's moving around. Um, I would say that as we do return to normal, some of us have had minimal or no damage or some of those things, but there's some people who have lost a tremendous amount or lost everything. So I would, you know, encourage everyone to remember that this is not something that ends in a couple days. Um, the relief efforts have to turn into redevelopment efforts and to keep those thoughts and those people in your thoughts and prayers moving forward. The two previous board members have so beautifully and succinctly summarized uh, the true feelings. So I will just say I, I fully concur with everything that said and, and uh, I wish and wish that all uh, will get back to normal quickly and those who have been hurt will heal quickly and uh, they should remain in our prayers as, as time passes. Uh, I did not ask you, Mark, uh, during your comments, you mentioned detours. Are all routes up and running? They're all running, but there are a number of detours. And one of the, uh, interestingly, one of the most critical issues, really day one, a, a frantic Roland Caldwell calls me <laughs> and uh, says the sheriff pretty much wants to shut us down on the whole north end of town. And and uh, then he took uh, our system map and went out there to where their command post was set up. And once I think he was able to lobby with them, uh, we were able to move to, we're going to serve what we can serve. There in the detours, there are, are some areas that service is lost, but much better than lopping off the whole north end of, of our system in some cases. So uh, it just uh, shows the value of people when we need them to get out there and, and make those contacts. Because, you know, the sheriffs, obviously, they don't know what we do. They don't really know where the lines on the map go. Uh, and of course, there were people that needed us on, uh, everywhere we could get there. And then I think that kind of took us to the next level where we started doing all these more personalized movements of people from individual facilities and that. And uh, so, yeah, it, it's all running, uh, but uh, but my phone keeps blowing up. Every morning it's blowing up with ride time alerts. Woke me up the other night. I got like 17 of them uh, in the middle of the night, but some of them change a little bit here and there, but but we're, we're covering pretty much everything we can cover. And, I, and one of the things that popped up yesterday I think we had a dialysis center that was completely taken out of business, and that's caused some issues on the paratransit side. But uh, they're doing a great job of getting through it. When something pops up, they just react and go take care of people, and that's kind of our mantra here. I got a call from Chris Cole last night. He said he heard a rumor I was driving a bus. <laughs> and I said, well, I wasn't driving a bus, but we had four people that were going to be late for work because of one of these detours. I just took them to work. And they said, are you like a supervisor? I said, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but that's what that's what we do, and I think that's kind of when we're at we're our best when we're you know finding where the need is. And uh, at first we didn't weren't sure what we could do, but we were certain that there were going to be people who need to be transported. Obviously, it's what we do best, and I think our employees, especially the operators, I think they really love it when they get diverted into into a project like that, mm -hmm. where they know they're you know helping people in need. I appreciate it and to echo what uh, the other board members have said because we forget that we're so concentrated on the loss of shelter, the loss of, you know, we're collecting water, we're collecting food, we're collecting this, but that fundamental need of transportation, people have to get to work, they have to get to the doctor, they have to get to the grocery, and some people who lost their transportation because of their automobiles and now all of a sudden, you know, so it's just uh, inspiring to see staff responding to that and keeping the buses rolling That's uh, at a time like that. So to, to add to your comment, Dave, uh, we just so people know, we're using the Red Cross uh, to be our distributor of, you know, we've got, we've consigned to them 31 day passes. So if they can determine a person's real need, they can just get passes to them. And, uh, I am um, 
would just like to kind of echo what Adrian mentioned. Um, I was at the uh, church at Salem and and um, um, he, um, Olive. Yeah, that's what I meant. Olive and Westbrook, and uh, we were putting out supplies, hoping people would show up. And a bus pulled up, and I said, "Oh, great! Some people. Maybe they're bringing people." The door opened, and nobody ever got off. And I was like, well, Dad, why did that bus come? So I, in my usual inquisitive manner, not nosy, inquisitive manner, I walked over to the bus to see why it was there. And the driver told me that it was there for people to do what Adrian said, come in, charge their phones, charge their iPads, laptops, cool down. Um, some some people had pulled up and were grilling right at the corner, right beside the bus, and they came over and asked if there was a place to put ice. They want, didn't want the ice to melt as quickly, and the driver said, "Yeah, you can put it in. You can put it in. We have a refrigerator, but it's not a you know a freezer, but it won't you know um, melt quite as quickly. But it was really a pleasure to be able to see that bus there." and realize that it was something that was being done for the community who was who is very devastated at this point. That whole area back there had some really major damage. So it's really, it's really inspiring to be able to see that RTA, as Adrian said, is doing what our motto is, and that is to provide service. So I want to thank again those that were out there that were making sure that it was happening. And uh, uh, the driver, I, I told him I don't, don't remember names. And he said, well, it's an easy name. So when he said that, I did remember William. I can't remember the last name. <laughs> he he made, yeah. kind of forced me to remember his name. But um, again, it, it's just, it's what we do. And it was really good to see that. You and Mr. Hicks were on social media. So. I'm sorry. You and. Operator Hicks were on social oh, media. Oh, that was his last name, Hicks, William Hicks. <laughs> I remember William. <laughs> oh, great. That's all I needed. He looked great. Uh, yeah, right. I, after a picture was taken, I said, do I have lipstick on? <laughs> but anyway, again, kudos. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I just want to thank Mark and the staff again. I, this whole thing is surreal. I live in Clayton. And one mile south and one mile north is all this devastation. And I can get in my car and go to the Kroger over in Englewood, and you'd never think anything happens. That's the same way with me. All you got to do is go a half a mile south, mm. and you see it. So this is a pretty devastating thing. And for those of us who drive through it every day, we're finding more and more routes that are open yeah. to get downtown. Yeah. So, but I, I, I just want to echo, I think RTA, you, you all make me proud, and mm -hmm. so right. I'm, I'm glad to be a part of this. And I'd just like to restate what everyone else said. <laughs> oh, um, I mean, and, and applaud the staff for everything you're doing. I think it's it's wonderful that we're able to step up for the community like this. I, I want to start with um, applauding uh, RTA for um, standing up against the hate that was in our city. Mm. Um, I, I'll I'll just start there, and and. I uh, congratulate the staff of recognizing that you can use the buses as a tool to communicate because I love the picture where um, it, the lights were flashing and it was United Against Hate and um, I reposted it and there were people from all over the country who were, um, who were really um, sending shout outs to our public transit system for um, having the kahunas to go out in the community and drive around with um, uh, rolling billboards, so to speak. So um, I appreciate um, stepping out. You know, a lot of businesses said nothing. Um, RTA could have said nothing uh, and looked at it just as business as usual. So that was, that was really good. And then right on the heels of that was the, the tornado. Um, the only thing that I would add, because I agree with everything the, the board members uh, said, um, I was out there with uh, Sharon on Saturday and because um, it was blazing hot. So the cooling station was great. Um, I, I took great advantage of the cooling station. <laughs> so I appreciate them being there. But, you know, uh, 
working in a, in a health care system, when you have a disaster, um, even though your employees have been impacted, your employees have been trained to just deploy in health. And so the RTA is the same way. I mean, they're not just um, providing transportation, but they're out in the community, they're delivering food, they're picking up food, they're taking things to people. Um, that's that's kind of what you want your public system to do. But I would also say, um, um, now that you your team can catch your breath, I, I hope that we are doing what we need to do to take care of the RTA employees who were affected. Um, I'm not quite sure what we're doing, um, but um, as much as they're working and we appreciate them, we don't want to forget about the employees um, and make sure that we're, we're, we're taking care of them. Um, so that would be my, my only additional message. But it, it's, it was great to see that RTA stepped up, which we all expected that they would. Um, but demonstrating what you say you're going to do is not always the thing that you do. So it was great to see. Just so you know, each department has made personal contact with each employee who's been affected. So uh, we're making absolute, absolutely sure that we're, you know, and some people, you know, don't want help, but uh, we're, we're being very careful to, to make sure it's personal contact. I, I just want to add a final comment. Uh, having been doing this most of my adult life, uh, we do the things we do because we're empowered by this board. And I've been in cities where you didn't do anything above what you were absolutely required to do. And you know, it's one of the things I've always loved about being on this transit system that uh, when a question comes up related to an event like this, I feel this confidence that I know this group of people well enough that you're gonna support some of the things we do uh, other places, I, I'm telling you, they would wait and make their board have an action item and, you know, 30 days later, everything's over and they haven't reacted yet. So thank you for, you know, placing that trust in us uh, so that we can feel confident when things like this pop up. Uh, we can do what we feel really is the right thing to do. Uh, and I'm sure we'll stumble now and then. But so without your support, we, we couldn't do this. And, and I don't always think you realize, you know, how great a board you really are. And uh, I brag about you guys all the time when I'm traveling and meeting with my friends and they're like, really? You know, because it, it, it's different and maybe that's the Dayton way. You know, I've heard that term used before. But I think that's really cool. And, uh, and, and I think even the things that sometimes we think are a little risky, sometimes those are the ones that turn out to be, wow, that had the biggest impact. Sure glad we did that, you know, and uh, uh, and again, and we're lucky to have a great team here that, you know, they know when to draw the line to where, you know, this is this is the limit of what we can do. And then maybe we we seek other help for people. But so thank you for your support. Absolutely. Well, you don't always get the last word since I'm running this meeting. I get to have the last <laughs> word <laughs> And just to piggyback on that being a financial person with a financial background, I did think when I saw that bus over there, I said, oh, I wonder how we're going to pay for that. And then, I said, and then I said, but who cares? It's important to do what people need. And I'm sure that we wouldn't be doing it if we couldn't figure out a way to be able to do it and make people be, you know, help people in, what, in their time of need. And then so to, to be at the meeting today and hear that you've already thought about FEMA um, support possibility, I was like, oh, see, he thought about that. He did think about the financial part of it. So, you know, we, we do what we do because it's the right thing to do. It's what we should do. It's ethically and morally what we should do. And then people will comment and make comments about, well, you're spending money to do this and to do that. But we've got to do what's right. And I commend the board on that again and the RTA community. To, to turn around and see um, Nikki in the background. So, oh, can I take your picture? And I'm like, no, that's not why we're here. <laughs> so it was really good to see them out doing what they normally do. After she did. took the picture. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> and and Ma Madam President, I hope we're, we continue to um, lift up the staff. We have exactly. to keep cheering for them because this is a huge opportunity for the RTA. With, with I think Dave mentioned it in terms of people who might be discovering 
uh, RTA transit for the first time because they're without a vehicle. So we got to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward. Uh, I know our people are probably tired, but let's keep cheering on our drivers because they will be introduced to new customers. Right. Um, and that's a great opportunity for us. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So kudos again. And we will move on at this point. There's a request for an executive session that I don't think we need. You don't. So we will not have a, an executive session. So we're, we are at adjournment. But before I say that, our next <clears throat> our board meeting of July 2nd has been canceled. So you can take that off of your agenda, and, I mean off of your schedules. And the next meeting will be August 6th. Our next board meeting will be August 6th. Our committee meetings are also canceled for June 18th. So the next committee meeting will be July 16th. <coughs> and that's all on your agenda. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll second that. It's been properly moved and second. We're adjourned. <laughs>